All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fabs in the house, and welcome back to the channel. Today I am in the house doing something a little bit different uh, with a different setup as you can uh, see and there's no knives and there's no fidget toys uh, today but there's a pretty cool camera. I don't know how many of, uh, of you guys are into cameras but I am for sure and this is a special one. This is the Horseman SW617 Professional and I'm just gonna set it up and uh, show how to put together this pretty cool mechanical puzzle and uh, how to load uh, the film basically into the camera and get ready to shoot uh, so yeah it's uh, it's a different one i don't know i i hope you enjoy this uh, thing it's very different than uh, the usual video but um, I don't know. It's. Uh, I thought, why not uh, uh, share uh, also my passion and my work with my uh, audience? And uh, I really hope you guys enjoy this uh, this video. So, let's start uh, putting together this beautiful uh, camera. This is uh, made in Japan. It's uh, it's a panoramic camera. Uh, this is the body, and uh, it is made with uh, an incredible precision uh, this is a camera body look at this it's just like a square piece of precisely machined uh, metal and um, this is the professional version which means it has rise and fall 17 millimeters up and down so basically you just unscrew this part and then you have the frame just slide right so that's pretty cool feature to have if you do architecture and um, uh, then we have some other parts uh, that uh, you might be familiar with like for example the lens and uh, the film loader and the finder and there are some other bits uh, and goods uh, uh, there but let's get started so first of all i would just start by taking this gorgeous lens this by the way is a um, schneider Kreuznach uh, uh, Super Angulon. This is a 90 millimeter f uh, 5.6 with 110 uh, degrees of angle of field on a Copal Zero uh, shutter from 500 to one second plus the B and T poses and gets up to 64. For the aperture, you have the focusing helicoid mounted on this cone with four screws. Uh, uh, right over there and the shutter uh, release because yeah you can also hand hold this camera so basically you see you just uh, place the uh, plate on top of the body and you start uh, uh, screwing in these four screws so make sure they are nice and tight there are some plastic washers I believe so should be good to go all right so this is the first step uh, that you can do um, after you can do you can mount uh, like so for example you can set up the uh, lens guard which is this piece right over here it's pretty uh, cool because this is a camera you're gonna you want to bring it on the field so the lens being quite delicate uh, it needs uh, this guard which is pretty cool so um, from here I would just go like that because we have nothing mounted on there we go just sustain the lens a little bit there we go and then you're gonna need like a coin like a screwdriver something like that I'm gonna use um, this guy see nice leatherman um, oh and by the way because I'm going to attach a center filter which is this guy right over here which is the 4a in case uh, you want to know uh, which one you need for the super angle on Excel uh, you see you're gonna need to uh, cons consider some a little bit of tolerance so uh, normally the, the 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 guard could be up to here protecting everything but because there's gonna be a large filter mounted on this guy needs to go back let's say kind of a little bit less than flush something like that 
in fact, as you can see, you can you see the extension that gets to that point, which means we are doing good. So like that, you just give it a little tight, uh, not too tight. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. Just make sure. not to over tighten it there you go so at this point you got the lens guard mounted on and then uh, next up we could do we could put together um, the finder of course that would be so this is the finder, of course, for the lens. It's a dedicated one. And if you're wondering inside, it just looks like that. So you have some bright lines. You have the number to remind you that it's uh, the 90, of course. Oh, I can focus. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, lovely. So the bright lines are lit by this little window. And then you can see your 6 by 17 ratio. It's almost like three to one in your finder it's uh, it's gorgeous i love it because it's like so uh cinematographic it's a little bit hard uh, to do it with that perspective here you go so you mount the finder like so all right uh, then uh, what you want to do is uh, get your um, ground glass ready uh, because this is going to be the step where you want to uh, focus and check maybe the exposure and see the composition on the ground glass so you want to do it without putting the center filter on because the center filter is going to uh, reduce a little bit of uh, light right like in this case 1.5 stops so that's the moment uh, where you would uh, just mount your ground glass with this slanted edge to the right just like so and uh, before doing it you're just gonna have to open these two flaps to the sides like that and then just lock that into place so you're gonna be able to see what is going on just by putting on the B pose, setting B pose right over there. You just cut the shutter and you're going to have like a cable release like that one, just set to B position. And then when uh, with the with the wide uh, uh, aperture, you're going to have the ability. I don't know if you can see, probably not. But anyways, you saw for a little bit that uh, light was passing through and it's creating an image right over here where you can uh, pretty much focus, compose uh, your image. And then once you're done, of course you imagine like you have all this set up uh, already on your tripod, but that's gonna be maybe, I don't know, another video. Anyways, uh, that's the point where you wanna mount uh, uh, your magazine, right? At this point, you have this part over here, which is the film loader. And then you have this part, which is pretty cool because uh, this is what makes this camera great, in my opinion. So you can lock this in position like so, like I locked the ground glass. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a film uh, uh, back, so you can uh, switch. And here you're gonna lock, so this is in place. So you can switch uh, film back, you can switch film actually as you shoot as uh, well as you can switch the lens uh, as you're shooting mid-roll. So that is a pretty cool uh, uh, feature for sure to have on a, a camera this level. And uh, next step, you wanna just insert the dark slide onto this side like so. I just added this little piece because it's like very snug. So it just makes sense like to pull it out like so. Look at this Marvel right over here this is the latch like to release you see it's it's a safety feature you can just release on one side you need two sides anyways at the, this point uh, you just want to install the center filter to reduce uh, 
eliminate actually in this case the vignetting right so you're gonna have uh, there you go so you have the center filter right over there now at this point uh, you're gonna grab your uh, in this case because the uh, first version of the 4a is 108 millimeter you're gonna need uh, with an external of 112 millimeter um, you're gonna need the donut which is this guy um, in order to accommodate the um, this big boy like so you're gonna just put it in the front of the filter like that and just screw it in and this guy is just going to basically clamp onto the filter and it's very solid so you have the filter holder mounted like so all right and now it's time to just grab your filter for example i'm just going to use uh, a polarizer like right over here so insert the polarizer for example like so and then uh, maybe you want to use like a grad uh, filter so you can also use that uh, just do it like this there you go and then you're going to decide wherever you want to displace it so you have uh, pretty much your camera ready this is the roll and this is your uh, shutter release cord so this thing is made by Silvestri it's pretty cool it's um, you just uh, untwist that and just stays where the B pose and you release it like that stays and release or you just screw it in all the way in and it's just like as much as you want but it's just not gonna be locked so this one you just screw it into this position over here and you have this ready to rock and roll uh, this is your film so at this point it's the time when you want to lo load the film so for this one I'm just gonna remove the cable it was just like a nice view of course so in this case uh, you can uh, simply remove the back okay so let's put this to the side for a second and i want to show you how to load a roll of uh, in this case is e100 it's a reversal it's a slide uh, from Kodak all right so you got your roll uh, this is the back uh, I believe this is made by Mamiya it's very nicely made guy horseman look at this made in Japan uh, rubberized uh, top and bottom you have this uh, of course four exposures with a 120 uh, roll this is the uh, shutter um i uh, sorry the advancement lever uh release after you take the shot uh, you have to click this way and then you are able to load the film otherwise it's not gonna load anyways you just open this fella right there and you grab uh, this pretty much stays attached to the camera in this case but you grab this thing and you're gonna notice that there's like a hole right over here and uh, uh, you're gonna notice that there's two slots for the uh, spools so if you find a spool right over here just remove it and put it on this side and uh, then you're ready to rock and roll pretty much you can tear this thing like so and just remove completely make sure there's nothing and just pull out this little thing flap and uh, usually you would load like that no in this case you would just load it load it like this and uh, this is spring loaded so like so you just push it down like so and you make sure it clicks up top and then you just slide it make sure you see black on the back because that's going to be the film and then you pay attention to this 
little hole right over here and you pull and it's fine you see and then I just align this crease with the with this the slit on the spool which is just right here and once it's to that position I just leave it and just let the lever do the work you see I'm not doing anything and it's this is the proof that it's loaded correctly so then at this point you just switch your vision to the hole and you keep advancing basically <laughs> you, when you get to this point you just you're done and uh, you take this uh, film loader you just put it inside the holder you make sure this is locked like that and then you're able to just mount the film you could do it like that back onto the camera like so and uh, you see like this is uh, you know a SW617 Horseman professional fully set up ready to rock and roll almost because uh, you still are at uh, uh, S so at this point you want to load the film until you see the number one and uh, your camera is ready to go ready to shoot uh, ready to receive the inputs and um, it's uh, it's a gorgeous one guys it's one of my favorite uh, cameras i thought uh, to share this one with you because uh, it's part of my let's say edc if it is even if it's not like pocketable like uh, it would be a fidget toy or on a knife but uh, it is definitely uh, something that I love to carry with me uh, because it takes uh, incredible uh, pictures I mean it's a little bit uh, big one uh, you know like not super light I understand but uh, definitely is uh, the best uh, 6 by 17 centimeters panoramic camera i would say in the market because you get a uh, couple alternatives really if you want to switch lenses and uh, um, uh, and backs uh, it's very very uh, small there's a, it's a very small market so there's mainly linoff and uh, fuji offering the 617 uh, format uh, for uh, like you know like uh, let's say higher end uh, uh, camera systems and uh, and this is a very very cool system indeed it's um there's four lenses uh, each finder is uh, coupled and uh, with this uh, body right over here you get to see uh, some uh, rise and fall like that which is incredible like to be able to do it uh, um, when you are on the field is uh, it's a pretty cool thing especially when you want to change the back and uh, the lens at the same uh, after you know in the same session uh, one shot after after the other you're gonna be able to, to do it so so it's a uh, it's a pretty unique camera lenses are fantastic uh, the filter system is a little bit cumbersome but uh, it works I mean it's not small as a setup but uh, for sure it gives you the chance to use uh, two uh, filters at the same time these are the SW uh, 150 because they are 15 centimeters uh, or 150 millimeters long and uh, there is uh, plenty uh, of these guys that you can adapt uh, and use onto this uh, filter with this system it's a uh, it's a pretty rare one i believe i don't know how many are made actually let me know in the comments guys down below uh i'm i know it's like from 2007 made in japan it's a beast of an uh, of a camera uh, the lens is made in germany and um, it's a uh, brand it's, it's gorgeous and this is the Horseman SW617 Professional. So there you have it. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Stay tuned.